hi everyone uh, today we are going to discuss one very important topic the open shortest path first that is a routing protocol so if you remember then routing protocols job is to learn routes add them in the routing table so like this and then on the basis of that making some routing decision to forward the traffic or packet from source to destination and for that, they actually use some routing algorithm. So routing algorithm are basically logic or maths used by the router to learn and choose best path. So it can have multiple paths. It has to select any one best path from source to destination. So there are many routing algorithm, for example, distance vector routing algorithm, link state and advanced distance vector. Uh, but uh, for us, this open shortest path first routing protocol actually uses a link state routing pro uh, link state algorithm that's also known as Dijkstra algorithm. So the link state based routing protocols are the router send every information about network to every other router. For example, in this case, you can see we have two routers. So the first router sends every information to the second router and in the same way the second router also sends the complete information to the first one. And this OSPF actually saves and exchange this network information using LSA that LSA stands for link state advertisement and this LSA has the network information. And the combination of these LSAs is known as the Link State Database or LSDB. And this collection of LSA is also known as topology table as well. So in addition to LSDB, they also are called topology table. Now, to exchange or to convey this information, these all routers go through a process known as flooding, where they flood the network information. So as an example, let's see, we have this router R10, and this R10 is going to flood the network information using LSA. So what happens? R10 forwards the, its LSA to its neighbor router, and the neighbor routers forward that information to some other its neighbor and then this process ends when this information has been sent to all the available routers in the network and in the same way all other routers for example r1 has to do the same thing r3 has to do same thing so all the routers has to exchange the information with every other router in the network and this is known as flooding and this flood ends when every router knows about every other router in the network. And this flooding may occur if the neighbor router doesn't, does not have LSA, or if one of the link is, fails, or if one of the link is introduced in the network. For example, this is the network. If there is a new router comes, and this is being configured with OSPF, then this is a new link in that case as well these all routers need to exchange these LSAs with each other. Now, this actually link state protocol, a rough example is just a Google Maps. So in this case, for example, my computer through the internet, of course, I have the complete information about all the possible addresses in my region. So what I do, if I want to go somewhere, then I will just search that and this map, Google map will give me possible path. Maybe for example, I want to go by car, I, I want to go by foot, I want to go by cycle, so I will just choose one of the paths there. So anyway, it, it can show, <clears throat> give me different paths. So exactly in the same way, this works. OSPF actually follows three steps to fill the routing table. To fill the routing table means once the router has this routing table, then router can use this routing table to make the routing decision. So our purpose is to fill the routing table. So this 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 uh, happens in three steps. We are going to discuss those steps. So in the first step, these routers, which are actually part of the OSPF, they become neighbors. In the second step, 
they exchange the database information so they exchange the network information with each other and finally in the third step they actually calculate the best rule so the first step they establish a network relationship with each other so in this case for example these are two routers they will establish a networking relationship with each other or sorry neighbor relationship with each other and in the and the, then they will uh, exchange this lstb that link state database and finally on the basis of that they will calculate the best path using some math that math is known as shortest path first now the first step of becoming neighbor so for that the routers sitting on the same virtual lane or same serial link or ethernet when they actually send hello messages to each other and for that for example in this case we have two routers let's suppose this router as this router both of them have been configured with ospf it means they are following that uh, ospf routing protocol in that case they need to send hello messages to each other for example this r1 sends a hello message to r2 let's say this is r2 this sends hello message and this r2 also in return sends a hello message back to r1 like this and this these hello messages are sent using multicast address and that address is this that address is actually the dot should be there and this means to all ospf speaking routers ospf speaking router means all the routers where the ospf has been configured so in this hello message the important entity is a router id and in that router id so this is a router id that is actually 32 bit in length and that router id can be assigned manually to the router or that can be decided by the router and how to use router id we will discuss some and some other video and then these hello messages are exchanged at regular interval and that interval is 10 seconds and this is known as hello time so by default that is 10 seconds and this hello uh, messages are actually sent in the ip packet so within the ip packet we send these hello hello messages and in this IP header, we have a field that is known as type field, and we put that value as 89, and then this actually sends our hello messages. And for these two routers, or some of the routers to become neighbors of each other, they have to satisfy some of the conditions. So the important conditions are, there are many conditions. Some of them are, for example, those routers should be within the same subnet. So they may have in the same area. So we'll discuss area as well, and they should match this hello and dead interval time. So for two routers to become neighbors, they need to satisfy some of the conditions. Now, during discovery of neighbors, these routers actually go through different states. So for example, initially these two routers, for example, this is R1, R1, and this is R2, for example, they are shut down in that case we say they are in that dead state and then they start sending hello message and in that hello message for example r1 this router sends its own router id which is this and this also sends something which is empty there's nothing and then this router 2 sends back a hello message and in that hello message this r2 is going to send its own router id which you can see is here and in addition to that this r2 sense that i have seen this router okay so in this case we say this router is in in it our interim state and this state means this r2 router knows about r1 so r2 router knows about r1 and this r2 knows that yes i know about him but he doesn't know about me. So this state is known as interim. And then this R1 sends back a hello message. And in that message, R1 is going to send again its own router ID. And it's going to send some information that I have seen this router or this router. And now you can see in this message, 
the identification of this router is available. And when this router receives this message, this router actually makes sure that now I know router one and router one also knows me. Now they both know each other and they agree that we are able, we are full, we fulfill all the requirements to become neighbors. And in that state, we say that both of the routers are actually in two-way state. So when the routers are in two-way state, it means they actually know each other and they fulfill all the requirements for becoming neighbors of each other. Now, once the router are in two-way state, it means they have accepted to be neighbors of each other. They start exchanging this LSDB, link state database. But instead of sending all the data at once, they actually send the list of LSA. So if you remember, the combination of LSA is LSDB. So first they send the list using this a specific packet that is database description packet. And for example, we have this list. So they send a list. For example, this router has sent that list to this router. And now this router, this router will look into its database and will see that out of that list, which LSA do I have and which I don't have. So some of the LSAs may be missing in this router, then this router will send actually a request back to this router. And in this request, this will ask for the remaining LSA, which this router doesn't have in its LSDB. So for example, after that request, so if that request will be sent in link state request packet, and then it will receive that LSA. Now, one more important thing is that this LSA are actually sent in a packet, in a special packet. That packet is known as link state update because LSA itself are not packets, but they travel within a packet that is known as LSU. And after some of other uh, phases or some other states, finally they actually exchange the complete LSDB with each other and once they have exchanged this information with each other, they are said that now they are in full state. So they are in full state after exchanging the complete information with each other. So now they are in a stable network is in a stable state, but to maintain this stability, we need to do something or we need to maintain this neighbor and LSDB state. What we do, uh, one thing is that this hello messages are sent after every uh, um, 10 seconds. And then for example, this router waits for 40 seconds. And after 40 seconds, if it has not received any hello message from this router, for example, then this router will consider that this link has been failed. And that time is known as a dead interval. And after that, they need to reinitiate the, uh, the process of exchanging this LSA. And second is, in case of topology change, topology change means if, if some of the link fails or some new router is introduced in the network, in that case as well, they need to exchange this LSA. And finally, after every 30 minutes, these LSAs are re in the network. It means even if the network is stable, the LSAs are actually exchanged again after 30 minutes, this time is by default for sure. And the final step is they have to, so what we discussed, first the router became neighbors of each other by, by exchanging the hello messages. And then after they have become neighbors of each other, they exchange the LSDB or the link state database. And once the router have enough information in their LSDB, it means they have enough database, enough network information. Now they have to calculate the best path to reach the destination. So for example, in this case, this is the router who has to decide about the uh, best path. So uh, it, they will use the, it will use the LSDB, which has been received by all other routers in the network. And for that, it uses SPF are the shortest path first, and this actually calculates all possible paths. So this SPF calculates 
all possible paths from router to the destination submit. So for example, this is a destination, destination submit and this is a router which is going to calculate this or which is going to run this algorithm. And for that, for example, after running that, it has found that one of the paths is this, second path is this, and third path is this. So in this way, somehow they form the SPF tree. Once they have this tree are all possible paths, they calculate a metric for each route. So what they have, they have different routes to go. So what they do, they just calculate this uh, uh, route for them. So for example, they have one path from here to here. So what they do, they have a cost associated with interfaces. So for example, these, these are outgoing interfaces. In this case, this is outgoing interface, this is outgoing interface, and this is outgoing interface. What they, so in this way, and this outgoing interface cost is actually calculated by using the interface bandwidth and some reference bandwidth. So they will all have these all uh, interface costs. And now they will add these all costs for one path. So for example, for this path, they will add these all and the result will be 80. For example, if you add 10, 20, 20, 10, so this will be the cost when you go from this router to this network following this path. And for the next path, for example, from for going from this to this, this is the cost. And for the third path, this is the cost. So for going from this to this. Now we have the cost associated with every path. So we have the metric for each route. And now as per this uh, routing protocol, we have to select the path having the least cost, a minimum cost. So in this case, we can see this 50 is the minimum cost and this will be selected as the best path. And now on the basis of that, one entry will be made, or uh, one entry will be inserted in the routing table. So you can see here in this routing table, it says that if you want to go to this destination submit, which is actually this, then we have to follow, we have to use this outgoing interface. And for that, the next hop address is this, and the metric value is this. So after these steps, so this is the entry. So after these all steps, this protocol was able to make an entry in the routing table. And in this way, it has to calculate the entries for all the networks um, in the network. So this was uh, some information about OSPF. And so important thing is that it has to go through these three steps. So first it has to find out the neighbors and then they have to exchange the database. And then on the basis of the de that database, they have to decide that which path is the best one. And then it has to make the entry in the routing table. Uh, some of the related videos on OSPF areas and backup or designated routers and backup designated router on Ethernet link, we will discuss in some other videos. So thank you. Thank you very much.